So as I mentioned in the promo video, this course follows a strategy of theory and practice. Each section in this course is going to have about 30 minutes theory and again about 30 minutes of practical exercise. Now the exact timings might be different section to section but generally that's what we're going to be looking at. So each section should take you about an hour to complete and I designed the course specifically with that in mind. I wanted you to be able to just consume this course one hour at a time because we're all busy. We can't all spend eight hours a day fully immersed into a course. Uh, if you're like me, you'd probably just have an hour every day perhaps just to, to spend on learning something new. And, and that's how I've designed this course. The course is going to start with a getting started section. In this section, we're going to discuss how to set up and run Pars Server locally as well as setting it up online to run on heroku.com. And then we're going to start discussing the JavaScript client library. We're going to discuss schema and objects. So this is how we define data in our database. We're going to discuss how to create tables, define the columns and the data types for each column and how to insert data into our database using the JavaScript client library. So JavaScript is asynchronous by nature. And that means that when we call functions in JavaScript, we can call them in a way where it just starts a process and doesn't wait for that process to finish before exiting the function. And what this means is that the execution of your code doesn't follow the order it's written on the screen for the most part. And this can result in kind of messy looking code, which makes it hard to follow and debug what's going on. So over the years, a JavaScript concept called promises has evolved, which helps to solve some of these problems, helps you to write cleaner code, especially when working with asynchronous frameworks like, like the Pars framework is. And in this section, I'm going to go through the Pars way of using promises. So what's the point in data in a database unless you can ask questions of your data? Pars has a pretty expressive query language. And in this section, I go through a number of examples of how to use the query language from the most basic to the advanced. Most web applications today involve users or user accounts. Now with a number of web frameworks, you have to build up this functionality from the ground up. But PARS has users as a first class feature. And in this section, I go through how to use PARS to sign up, log in and log out users. Now, if a user signs up with an email, so if the email is their username, it can be quite useful to make sure it's a real email address. And you've probably done this with other websites where after you sign up, you have to verify your email. It will send you an email to your email address and you have to verify it. So again, PARS has this functionality out of the box. And in this section, I show you how to set up sending a verification email when the user signs up with an email and also how to send a password reset request as well. So PARS takes security very seriously and ships with a number of features to secure your PARS application and make sure only certain users can perform certain activities. And in this section, I'll go through all of those features. Most apps these days involve some content that needs to be uploaded by the user and then made available via some public URL. So be them docs or files or, or images or videos. Now PARS supports this feature out of the box, but additionally lets you define alternative locations to store these files, including something called Amazon S3. In this section, I go through the simple built-in mechanism of PARS to upload and serve files, as well as show you how to extend that mechanism to use Amazon S3 instead. PARS also comes with geolocation support. In this section, I'll show you how to save a latitude and longitude associated with your records, and then how to query that data and ask questions like, return me all coffee shops near me. A new and very powerful feature of PARS is something called live queries. Now, live queries allow you to define rules by which data is pushed to you 
by the server. So now you no longer need to make calls to the database every five seconds in case there is some new data that's been added. Now PARS can push data to your application automatically. So one example of a typical use case for this would be a real-time chat application. Previously in PARS, you would have to query the database every five seconds to see if there's any new chat messages being added to the chat room. Now with live queries, you can have the server push to your application automatically new chat messages when they've been added to the database. A very, very powerful feature which now allows PARS to be used to build real-time applications. So in this cloud code section, I'll show you how to write functions in PARS which get executed on the server side, which you can use to perhaps validate data before it gets saved to the database, or just a solution so you can add complex functionality to the server side and just call them from the client side with just one line of code. In this hosting section, I'll show you how you can host your own basic HTML pages as well as the back end for your PARS application. So you can do things like create a simple landing page for your product. And in the production release section, I go through some of the steps you'll need to, to perform before you can release your application to production, such as adding a custom domain and moving to production dynos on Heroku. And in the appendix to this course, you're going to find instructions on how to set up your computer with both Git and Node, which are two tools which you're going to need in order to follow through the, some of the sections in this course, and which you're going to need just to run and manage PARS server locally on your computer. And at the very end of this course, you'll also find a bonus section where you can find links to further readings and coupons for some of my related courses.